Today I want to talk about my approaches to localization. I don't know how much localization support I'll give for the game, but I heard several other indie game developers say that they really regretted not preparing for localization until the end of development, so I wanted to make sure to set some foundations early on so that I would be prepared if I decide to localize in the future. First of all, Godot contains a localization function which looks like it could be very helpful for certain types of projects. Using a spreadsheet to contain translated texts, you can use the TR function to dynamically replace the texts in the game. If a game contains only labels or a simple dialogue tree, this will probably be the way to go. For my game, however, I wanted a more bespoke solution. I'm planning on four modules for the game. The card game, representing star system battles, an economic and faction management model, representing the domestic politics of your territory, a law formation module representing the development of your government, and a dialogue module for the plot. There might be different levels of localization for these different modules, so I need to handle it manually. The first step to localization was to make all of my texts as simple as possible when conceiving them. If you generate a sentence with variables mixed in, you also need to be aware of different rules for plurals, gender, and articles across different languages. For example, you might have an array with the words I, love, the, cat, and s in it. This would allow you to make procedural sentences either singular or plural, I love the cat, or I love the eight cats. But if you translate it into French, you need to have separate words for le chat and les chat. So that would ruin your simple sentence generation script and require more complexity. It's much easier if you can construct entire sentences or just get by with single words. The next step to preparing for localization was collecting all of the English language display texts into one script. That means that the texts of all the buttons need to be set in script. Any button images need to have their text set with a label rather than an image texture. Texts that were assembled in scene scripts need to be replaced with variables, which makes it much harder to read the script in the short term. I put the English language text into arrays in an autoload script and made a couple other universal autoload scripts with blank arrays to receive the texts from the English script. At game launch, I assigned the English text arrays to their blank counterparts in the universal scripts. Then, while the game is running, it can just call the text that have been loaded into those universal scripts. If the player changes the language, the game just needs to change a single variable and then update the displays. There are simpler ways I could have put this together, but for where I am in the project, this solution seems to be working very well. Right now I'm planning to have these languages in the game for the card module, which might have the smallest amount of text of all the modules. I decided on this list just by looking at which languages are most common on Steam. I'm confident that I can do the French, Russian, and Korean translations since I'm pretty good in those languages, and I can probably do Spanish, German, and Portuguese if I get a lot of help from Google Translate. Chinese and Japanese have me a little bit worried, and I might need to seek out a proofreader or just ask someone to do those translations for me. Since I'm planning to have Asian languages in the game, I wanted to make sure that I had a basic font which supported Asian characters. Arial Unicode MS is a great option for this. It looks clean and supports pretty much every language. I'll still need to change the fonts manually for the other stylized texts, such as the pseudo-medieval font on much of the UI, but at least the language option button can use a standardized font, which is really important because I don't have to change the font on that button for each of the different alphabets being used. I've gotten the card module now to a very polished state, and I think that I'm ready to move on to the next module. So in the next devlog, I'm going to be talking more about the next big phase of my project. Thanks for watching.